This is CNN. The news of the day, a worldview from CNN. This is CNN Worldview, including reports from Mike Hanna, Johannesburg, the bombing verdict, and Christian Amanpour, Afghanistan, the hidden killers. I'm Judy Woodruff in Washington. Tragedy on a mission to help rebuild the Balkans. Rescuers search for survivors after a plane carrying the U.S. Commerce Secretary crashes in Croatia. Let's continue now with, uh, with the news. We've had a, just a bit of a technical difficulty. We'll continue on here. What began as a mission to help bring the Balkans back to economic life has ended with a plane crash in Croatia. The plane was carrying a delegation of United States government representatives and business leaders, among them U.S. Commerce Secretary Ron Brown. The U.S. military launched an extensive search and rescue operation after the crash, but a Croatian doctor tells CNN there were no survivors. The plane was flying from Tuzla in Bosnia-Herzegovina to Dubrovnik on Croatia's Adriatic coast. It crashed into a small mountain as it came in for a landing at the Dubrovnik airport. Commerce Secretary Brown was planning to deliver a speech to business leaders in Dubrovnik, and a draft version of that speech reveals the theme of his mission. It says, quote, what our troops have begun with a firm established peace must now be expanded to economic achievement. We'll be going live to several locations as we bring you up to date on this developing story, but we're going to begin in the Balkans. CNN's Jackie Shemansky has more on how Ron Brown's mission and the plane crash that brought it to an end. A commercial mission brought U.S. Secretary of Commerce Ron Brown to the Balkans. The trip to Bosnia and Croatia was meant to complement the U.S.-led military mission by emphasizing the civilian side of the Dayton Peace Accord. Secretary Brown and a delegation of high-level U.S. executives first traveled to Tuzla on board the very same plane that U.S. Defense Secretary William Perry flew in just last week. The plane is the Air Force equivalent of a Boeing 737. The delegation was briefed on the military success of the peace process. Secretary Brown met with U.S. troops at a base camp not far from a former confrontation line. The tour was then to continue on to the coastal port of Dubrovnik in Croatia. Over 30 people were believed on board the secretary's plane, including government personnel and business executives. U.S. Ambassador Peter Galbraith awaited the Commerce Secretary's arrival in Dubrovnik. But five minutes short of the anticipated landing, Croatian authorities report losing radar contact with Brown's plane. Weather was poor. A search and rescue effort was mounted by both NATO forces in the region and Croatian authorities. NATO helicopters covered both the mountainous area around Dubrovnik and the Adriatic Sea. The plane apparently hit a mountain, and Croatian searchers have found both wreckage and bodies. Jackie Shemansky, CNN, Tuzla. While details of the plane crash are still filtering out in uh, Croatia, we can tell you more about the plane and the passengers involved in this crash. CNN's Carl Rochelle is live with us from the Pentagon. Carl? Judy, we have some new information about the, uh, the aircraft. The T-43 jetliner with 33 people aboard was in bad weather on an instrument approach into the airport at Dubrovnik, flying on instruments as it approached the airport. It should have been going in a straight line to, from the radio beacon to the airport. Instead, it hit a mountain well off course. Here's the runway structure out here. The aircraft approach would have been from this direction. Okay, we're heading now. We're to the west side toward Dubrovnik. We're heading to the southeast and landing in the direction of 120. I can't tell you why they were where they were nor am I in a position to speculate. Uh, we, that's exactly what General Coolidge and the Accident Board will attempt to determine. General Estes says it's too early to tell what caused the crash, why those pilots were off course. 
In addition to Commerce Secretary Ron Brown on the aircraft, there were a number of workers from the Commerce Department, some chief executives from some major U.S. corporations, and sources tell us there was at least one reporter on board believed to be from the New York Times. The T-43, which is the military version of the civilian 737 aircraft, was acquired by the Air Force in 1988 and underwent a routine but extensive renovation in 1995 in June of last year. It has 17,000 hours, 12,000 landings. Uh, the Air Force tells us that that's about half the time that a civilian aircraft of that uh, particular age would have on it. So they say that it is in good shape. They've never had a Class A accident with uh, one of those aircraft which began to uh, join the Air Force in 1974. Now, a Class A accident is one which there is a major injury or loss of life. They say that they have never had one before. It was the only one of its type operating out of the air base at Ramstein, Germany, and had seen extensive use. Uh, Defense Secretary William Perry was using it just a few days ago. And a week ago, First Lady Hillary Rodham Clinton was flying on that very same aircraft when she made a trip uh, in that area to visit troops in Bosnia and Herzegovina. There have been two unexplained crashes in the civilian version of the 737 jetliner, one near Pittsburgh about two years ago, in which all on board died, and one near uh, in Colorado uh, a couple of years before that, in which all on board died, both for some explaining reason rolled over and went directly into the ground. Uh, other than that, the 737 has enjoyed what would be an enviable safety record. It is one of the most popular uh, jetliners in the world, more than flying in any other particular aircraft type. The military usually investigates its own accident. The National Transportation Safety Board is sending some representatives to this crash, but they will be hampered in their investigation duty because the Air Force tells us there is no cockpit voice recorder on board this aircraft, nor was there a flight data recorder, the black boxes that investigators use to determine what went on in the minutes just before a plane went down. Judy? Carl, just one question. I listened to General Estes' briefing, and it sounded like he was anxious to say that the crew was fully experienced and was able to fly this plane, but reporters were pressing him. It sounded, like, it sounded as if, particularly on the point of where one military group uh, perhaps normally flies dignitaries, and this was another uh, group of pilots flying this plane. Can you amplify on that? Uh, well, what they were trying to do, and it's sort of tongue-in-cheek because the, uh, the group of VIP pilots who fly out of Andrews Air Force Base, who of course fly Air Force One with the President on it, Secretaries of State and Defense and so forth and so on, usually fly the VIPs. But in fact, they probably were flying this group, but they flew them over to the area. Then they got off and got on the smaller plane, which was flown by pilots who were more experienced in the region and should have been better equipped to handle this. It's hard to defend when you look at an approach from a pilot standpoint. The airplane should have gone from here to here and landed. It didn't. It went from here to here and crashed, and it's hard to defend or understand why it wasn't where it was supposed to be, and that's part of the problem there, Judy. All right, Carl Rochelle, and we want to point out, of course, there was, there was very bad weather conditions. It was foggy. It was raining hard. Uh, the visibility was very, was very poor, uh, as the general pointed out and as, as others in the area have pointed out. All right, Carl Rochelle at the Pentagon, thanks. Well, it's understandable that news of the plane crash shocked the White House, where Commerce Secretary Brown is seen as more than a cabinet appointee, but also a close friend of the president and a key political ally. CNN's Claire Shipman is at the White House, and she joins us with more. Claire? Judy, that's right. Officials here, the president, first and foremost, are extremely saddened by news of the tragedy in the Balkans. And they're still working to sort through a lot of the very confusing details that have been coming in all day. An extensive search and rescue operation is still underway in the mountains on the coast of Croatia. Pentagon officials say they've been working for hours to get to the remote crash scene. There are uh, helicopters on the ground at the, at the Brovniks airport, U.S. helicopters that held about 50 U.S. personnel. Initially, they made an attempt to land at the crash site, but because of the weather, were unable to do that. And so they are as rapidly as possible working their way up to where the crash site is. The U.S. says the chance that anyone may have survived, including Commerce Secretary Ron Brown, is slim. Estes says the crash does not appear to be the result of any hostile action. In Washington, President Clinton visited Commerce Secretary Ron Brown's family and then made a clearly heartfelt statement to workers at the Commerce Department about his good friend. He was one of the, the best advisors and ablest people I ever knew. And he was very, very good at everything he ever did. 
whether he was the Commerce Secretary or a civil rights leader or something else, he was always out there just giving it his all. Mr. Clinton also brought a morale-boosting message from Brown's wife. I asked Alma, I said, Alma, what do you want me to say when I go to the Commerce Department? She said, tell them Ron was proud of them, that he liked them, that he believed in them, and that he fought for the Commerce Department, and tell them that you're going to do that now, which I thought was an incredible thing. Brown was on a mission of economic support to Bosnia. Traveling with him were a number of business leaders and corporation heads, but an official list hasn't been released. The Pentagon says there were 33 passengers aboard the aircraft, including a six-person crew. Judy, the White House says that the president spent the entire day focused on the tragedy, waiting for details, talking to members of Ron Brown's family, taking a call from the Reverend Jesse Jackson, and they say he has no plans for this evening other than to wait for news from the crash site. Judy. All right, Claire Shipman at the White House. Thanks. Now to you, Arthur, in London. Thanks, Judy. The mission that brought Ron Brown to the Balkans was a simple one, to generate trade, a mission that took him to all corners of the globe. CNN's John Holloman has spent the day at the U.S. Commerce Department and joins us live. John? Arthur, I'll tell you, you, you can't overstate the shock that members of uh, Secretary Brown's staff and the his co-workers here at the Commerce Department have been in since word first filtered out about the uh, plane crash about six or seven hours ago. So many long faces walking the halls of this building, which is now shut down for the day except for the uh, acting Secretary of Commerce and some other workers who have set up an emergency center just to get what word they can out to the rest of the staff members when they get into work tomorrow. But uh, as has been pointed out already tonight, the Commerce Secretary's fate is still unknown at this moment, but he's already being praised and remembered. President Clinton says Ron Brown's mission in the former Yugoslavia was a mission of hope for the war-torn region and of opportunity for American business. He was so excited because he thought that along with these business leaders and the other very able people from the Commerce Department on this mission, that they would be able to use the power of the American economy to help the peace take hold in the Balkans. The trip started in France for a meeting with the G7, trade ministers from the seven top industrial nations, but got into high gear when the Commerce Secretary arrived in Tuzla, where he met with American GIs serving in Bosnia. He was accompanied by a group of chief executive officers of major U.S. companies who agreed to help restore Bosnia's buildings, its water and energy systems, its tourism, and even the banking system. Secretary was over there to uh, look at the new civilian implementation possibilities that we are committed to, uh, the United States government is committed to through the Dayton Agreement. Aides at the Commerce Department say the Secretary planned to help get up to $5 billion in contracts for American companies from a special international fund created under the Dayton Peace Accords. The purpose of the trip was to start our U.S. commercial presence in uh, the region, to start economic reconstruction, um, to bring in U.S. companies in the development of the region. Twelve executives were scheduled to go with Brown, but several didn't make the trip, including the head of the Virginia high-tech firm, DynCor. If that country ever gets back on its feet again, uh, and, and uh, we've we believe that our company, among other companies, can, uh, can help them in that development. Commerce Department staffers have just come up with a list of the various nations and regions of the world Secretary Brown has visited over the past couple of years. They range from South Africa, China, South America, the Middle East, India, Indonesia. Um, he's been all over the world trying to promote business for United States companies, according to his aides, and virtually all of these missions up to the present one have been successful. Arthur? Thank you to CNN's John Holloman at the U.S. Commerce Department. Well, meanwhile, in another part of the former Yugoslavia, the search is underway for thousands of Muslims missing since the fall of Srebrenica. In eastern Bosnia, U.N. investigators have unearthed a number of human bones at a suspected mass grave. There are allegations the victims were executed by Bosnian Serb separatists. This is the first physical inspection of the area by U.N. war crimes investigators. The International Red Cross says as many as 3,000 Muslims may have been slaughtered. Another 5,000 remain unaccounted for. 
Some answers, but still no final resolution to Europe's mad cow crisis. Still ahead on Worldview, with a heavy heart, Britain prepares for a massive slaughter. For a multimedia look at today's news, check out CNN Interactive on the World Wide Web at http colon slash slash cnn.com. You can access our site through the AT&T Business Network. CNN Worldview is brought to you by Jaguar Cars. For more information, call 1-800-4-JAGUAR. They say, surround yourself with Earth's forms and you'll find tranquility. In the presence of power, you achieve peace of mind. Remove yourself from chaos and you'll experience rejuvenation. Hence, our newest edition, Wide Open Spaces. Introducing the longer, roomier Jaguar Vanden Plug. We're always here. No matter how difficult the story, no matter how remote the place, shedding light on world events 24 hours a day. CNN, CNN International, Headline News, CNN FM, and CNN Interactive, bringing news and information to a half billion people in over 200 countries. It's how the world gets enlightened. The networks of CNN, the world's news leader. Nobody does it like you, the way that you do. Hoover, nobody does it like you. Investment advice. Everybody wants the inside scoop. But chasing every tip will drive you crazy. And it won't make you rich. A consistent investment program will get you somewhere. Find out about Janus No Load Mutual Funds. Get the information you need to get where you want to go. Start to think big. Janus Funds. Samson, the passion of Jacob. For one night only, TNT brings together three of the greatest stories ever told. Beginning tonight at 8 on TNT. Sunday on CNN Presents, 10 years after the world's worst nuclear accident. Could Chernobyl be a nightmare waiting to happen again? On the next CNN Presents, Sunday, 9 Eastern. Global health experts have reached the conclusion Britain was hoping for, that there is no proven link between mad cow disease and a similar sickness in humans. Despite that reassurance, the European Union continues its tough stand in the cattle crisis. In measures announced Wednesday, the EU says all British cattle older than 30 months will be destroyed. The ban on British beef exports continues, but Britain and the EU will share the costs of containing mad cow disease. The United States says it may require states to track outbreaks of the human brain disease linked to mad cow disease as a precaution. Well, disposing of an estimated 15,000 carcasses a week is a daunting task. The suspect animals cannot be used in any way. Rather, the bodies must be incinerated. But as CNN's Rob Reynolds reports, that's just one of the many hurdles Britain faces as it struggles with the scare over mad cow disease. The cattle on this English farm are virtually worthless these days, tainted like all British cattle by fear over mad cow disease. It's so difficult to know how you can convince the public that the meat that's coming into the chain is 100% safe. It's not only farmers who've been affected. 
At Smithfield Meat Market, one of Europe's largest, the hunks of British beef on sale have few buyers. Beef is 50% of my sales and it, and it just stopped. So for the, the two or three weeks that it's been going on, I've got the same expenses with 50% less volume going through. One pragmatist has posted a sign in keeping with the times, promptly scorned by a diehard British beef booster. Some meat wholesalers are keeping up a brave front in the face of BSE-inspired panic. Within a few weeks from now, every single Sunday lunch will go back to roast beef because they'll be sick of chicken and sick of fish. The same whistling past the mad cow graveyard approach has been adopted by government ministers, well, much, uh, despite uh, consumer revulsion against British beef well. at home and abroad. British beef is a product that we can be proud of. Unfortunately for British farmers, butchers and politicians, the European Union does not agree. The EU will maintain a worldwide ban on British beef exports, despite strident objections from London. That ban is not justified. It is not based on sound scientific analysis. It is disproportionate. It should be removed. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. But angry British voters may make the politicians pay for the fiasco. A poll out Wednesday shows nearly three quarters of the public believes the government knew there were risks in beef, but tried to cover them up. Covered it up. Tried to sweep it under the carpet and just let it come out now. Yeah. And that's why there's such a hoo-ha now. All this time, you've got to make know what's going on. Yeah, but they just the refuse to ask. Yeah. If action had been taken at the time, those animals could have been quickly removed from the food chain. It could have been stamped on at the time with far little cost compared with what it's going to cost the government now. And I think perhaps they just sat on it, hoping the problem would go away. All is not lost for British beef farmers, however. The European Union has agreed to help Britain with a multi-million dollar beef bailout. To help restore consumer confidence, all cattle over 30 months old will be slaughtered and burned. A total of nearly 5 million animals over the next six years. While British politicians continue to howl with outrage over the terms of the EU's beef agreement, taxpayers in other European countries also have reason to be upset they'll have to pay 70% of the cost of getting Britain out of its meat mess. That charge will total about $400 million a year for the next six years. Rob Reynolds, CNN, London. Still ahead, worldview goes to the Middle East. The Palestinian Council gets an angry greeting in the West Bank. We'll tell you why. This look at your worldview weather opens up with predicted high temperatures across the United States for Thursday. Cold weather is going to replace the warm weather across the central and northern plain states. Yesterday, we were seeing 80-degree readings as far north as Nebraska. Tomorrow, temperatures in that region only in the 40s and 50s. The cold front's pushing to the south and east, but the southeast will hang on with one more very warm day. In the far west, temperatures quite pleasant, 60s and 70s throughout much of California, Washington, and Oregon. On now to the forecast weather map, and you can see that cold front pushing through the Mississippi River Valley. Look for scattered showers all along it. Slight threat of some thunderstorm activity, particularly down along the Gulf Coast. But look for snowfall in the Great Lakes area. Widespread snowfall, but light is expected throughout the higher elevations of the Rockies. On now to the European continent, and you see an area of low pressure moving up through the Adriatic and into the Baltic states with rainfall associated with it. As it pushes on into Eastern Europe, if there is any snowfall, it should be changing over to rain with the influx of the warmer air. On now to Asia, a cold front pushes on past Japan. Around an area of high pressure, we will see a cool northerly wind blowing down across much of Japan. A stationary frontal boundary reaches into southeastern China. Look for the threat of rain at Taiwan and at Hong Kong. That's the latest look at your worldview weather. I'm Flip Spice. The GMC Sierra. This year, it has even more power. And it's always been known for strength. And of course, style. But we still felt the need for a little something on the side. 
the convenient new third door. Another first on Sierra from GMC. At the center of our justice system is balance. So we matched a hard-hitting former prosecutor with a tough-as-nails defense attorney. Together, they take a provocative look at today's most compelling cases and put the law on trial. Greta Van Susteren and Roger Kosick. The issues, the courts, and your rights. Burden of Proof. Weekdays, 12.30 Eastern on CNN. Remember when breaks were this simple? Today's braking systems are more complicated than ever. Still, Midas will keep them in top condition. They'll even guarantee new brake shoes and pads for as long as you own your car. Even if it becomes a classic. Send your package in two days with FedEx, and people are impressed. Cost, about $12. Send your package in two days with UPS, and people are impressed. Cost, about $6. Send your package in two to three days with priority mail from the U.S. Postal Service, and people are impressed. Cost exactly $3. So, 12, 6, 3, what's your priority? Priority mail from the U.S. Postal Service. At BASF, we don't make the skates. We make them ride smoother. We don't make the car. We make it more colorful. We don't make the shampoo, we make it gentler. We don't make the helmet, we make it more comfortable. At BASF, we don't make a lot of the products you buy, we make a lot of the products you buy better. BASF. It takes this much paper to buy a printer or copier. And this much paper to stop it. Get Hammer Mill, the paper that works. United States federal authorities have taken a man into custody who resisted a search on his home in Montana. And law enforcement sources say he is a suspect in the long-standing so-called Unabomber case. CNN's Anthony Collings has been gathering information at the U.S. Justice Department. He joins us now with the latest. Anthony? Well, Judy, um, th there could be a major breakthrough now in the Unabomber case. Law enforcement officials say that although no suspect has been arrested, a man has been detained in Montana, and CNN has identified him as Theodore Kaczynski. Law enforcement, source, law enforcement sources tell CNN that the FBI agents detained the man after he refused to let them search his home. His home is located near Lincoln, Montana. One law enforcement official told me, uh, we don't know yet whether this is the right guy. That's why we wanted to search his home. Apparently, the man is still being detained at his home, and that house is located about 40 miles northwest of Helena, Montana, the state capital. The uh, one source told CNN that it looks good that this suspect is the man the FBI has been searching for for 18 years. The Unabomber has killed three people and injured 23 with mail bombs. Last year, the Washington Post and the New York Times published his manifesto after he threatened to blow up an airliner. We have no further details, but as soon as we get them, we will bring them to you. Judy? And, uh, Tony, it's understood that his family members uh, provided information to the FBI? There is a report to that effect. Uh, there is no official confirmation yet, but that is one of the details that should be forthcoming as we go ahead with this story. All right. Tony Collins standing by at the Justice Department. Thanks. Arthur? They are intended for soldiers, but civilians too often pay the price. Still ahead on Worldview, a new push to ban the use of landmines around the globe. They say, surround yourself with Earth's forms and you'll find tranquility. In the presence of power, you'll achieve peace of mind. Remove yourself from chaos and you will experience rejuvenation. Hence, our newest edition, Wide Open Spaces. Introducing the longer, roomier Jaguar Vanden Pla. Tonight, brutality on the beat and the crossfire. Is this a rare case of excessive force or law enforcement business as usual? Tonight, 7.30 Eastern on CNN. 
Maybe you've never been in an accident, but I bet your car's got airbags, right? And maybe your house has never burned down, but I bet you've got smoke detectors. You're prepared for everything. But I bet you don't have flood insurance. The truth is, floods damage as many homes as fires. Now flood insurance is easy to get from the National Flood Insurance Program. So protect yourself. Because many people think their homeowner's insurance will cover flood damage. It doesn't. Only flood insurance enables you to rebuild your life without having to go deep into debt. Floods can happen anywhere. Storms cause rivers to overflow. New construction can cause runoff. The ground gets saturated. Soon the rising water is at your door. With floods, you can never say never. Give yourself peace of mind. Call your insurance company agent or this toll-free number. The National Flood Insurance Program. We can't replace your memories, but we can help you build new ones. Moneyline with Lou Dobbs. Weeknights, 7 Eastern on CNN. How do you rebuild a region devastated by war? That's the question Ron Brown was trying to answer before his plane crashed in Croatia. Plus, they are the victims of a hidden menace. Men, women, and children who had no idea what they were walking into. Those stories coming up, but first, these headlines. A U.S. military plane carrying 33 people has crashed near Dubrovnik, Croatia. Among those on board, U.S. Commerce Secretary Ron Brown. Brown was leading a delegation of government officials and business leaders. A doctor in Dubrovnik tells CNN there were no survivors. The Brown delegation was traveling in the Balkans, exploring ways to rebuild the war-devastated economies of Bosnia and Croatia. Before the Balkans can fully recover, they must resolve the issue of thousands of st civilians still unaccounted for. In eastern Bosnia, UN investigators have found a number of human bones at a suspected mass grave. The victims are alleged to be Muslims killed by Bosnian Serbs around the fall of Srebrenica. This is the first inspection of the area by war crimes investigators. The European Union has decided on a plan to address the scare over mad cow disease. Over British objection, the EU voted to retain the worldwide ban against the export of British beef. That ban will be reviewed in six weeks. The nations agreed to destroy British cattle older than 30 months. They are believed more likely to carry the disease. Farmers will be compensated by the British government and the EU. Palestinian leader Yasser Arafat has been noisily rebuked because of a crackdown against militants. 2,000 Palestinian university students converged on Ramallah in the West Bank Wednesday, protesting the arrest of hundreds of militants. Police tried unsuccessfully to disperse the crowd and then asked Arafat to address the students. He rushed to the scene to speak to the crowd, but was heckled instead. The students had been heading to a meeting of the Palestinian legislature. The legislators say that in session, Arafat said his security forces had violated Palestinians' human rights during the crackdown. They are some of the most crippling weapons of war, and they often strike long after hostilities have ended. But now a new effort is underway to try to ban the production, sale, and use of landmines. In a full-page ad in the New York Times, top U.S. military leaders say that an international ban on landmines is, quote, not only humane, but militarily responsible. It is estimated that landmines kill or maim more than 26,000 people each year. As CNN's Christian Amanpour reports, many victims are in Afghanistan. This is the face of war and peace. Infants, teenagers, adults, wounded by weapons that keep firing long after a conflict is over. We closed uh, this uh, stump. In one month, surgeons at one hospital in the Afghan capital, Kabul, amputated 35 limbs. Landmines caused almost all the injuries. Almost all the injured are civilians. The International Committee of the Red Cross runs the city's only rehabilitation center. There is no pressure here, yeah, no pressure there. Alberto Cairo has been fitting mine victims here for the past six years. The false leg business is not about to go bust. It's uh, pure terrorism. It's uh, 
you know perfectly when you put a mine that the mine will hit someone uh, innocent, someone that is not a soldier, someone that you are not fighting against. The fight against mines is being waged in the capital and the countryside. Teams of sniffer dogs and 3,000 workers hired and trained by the United Nations search and destroy. Scraping through the soil inch by inch, it's taken three days just to find one mine here. It is difficult, slow and very scary work. I must do it for my country, says Shafu Khan. 17 years of war, first against the Soviets and now against each other, have turned his country into one of the world's biggest minefields. 22 square kilometers in the capital alone. Only a fraction has been cleared. Work will last into the next century, if the funding does. A mine costs $3 to make, 1000 to remove. In the meantime... We cannot start our schools, our university, the people, they cannot work, you know, the farmers even, they cannot go to their land. In addition to mines, tons of unexploded weapons help cripple economies, ruin farmland, and prevent refugees from returning home. Here, a 120 millimeter mortar shell in someone's garden. The alarm is sounded. And this goes on day after day, week after week. And now the Red Cross has called for a total global ban on landmines. Since mines have caused several casualties amongst U.S. soldiers serving in Bosnia, the U.S. military has started to consider whether or not to join the growing anti-mine campaign. And advocates hope that will have a knock-on effect. However, there is still resistance from the many countries that make, sell and stockpile mines. In the meantime, the UN, Red Cross and other relief agencies are trying to protect the innocent by teaching them how to recognize and avoid mines. Because they kill about 10,000 people every year and maim many more. Because civilians, not soldiers, are the principal victims. A 13-year-old girl loses her leg collecting firewood. In societies like hers, a woman who's maimed is not marriage material. I was just farming my land. How did I know there were mines, says 16-year-old Popal, the family's only breadwinner. This hospital receives about 10 mine wounded a day. It is bracing for double that number now that spring has come, snows are melting, and farmers are going out to plant again. Christiana Manpour, CNN, Kabul, Afghanistan. A new report says too many children in Africa and Asia are working for little or no pay to help their families, often in difficult or dangerous conditions. The International Labour Organization surveyed working conditions in four countries, India, Indonesia, Ghana, and Senegal. The ILO report concludes that in developing nations, 25% of children ages 5 to 15 hold full or part-time jobs. The study was conducted between 1992 and 1993 to assess the link between trade and international labor standards. In the Whitewater trial in Little Rock, Arkansas, a U.S. judge Wednesday refused to let a key prosecution witness testify about more conversations he claims to have had in 1986 with then-Governor Bill Clinton. David Hale says Mr. Clinton pressured him to make an illegal $300,000 loan. Hale is testifying in the trial of the current governor of Arkansas and two of President Clinton's former business partners. The three are charged with obtaining millions of dollars in federally backed loans under fraudulent circumstances. Mr. Clinton is not charged in the case. Before his plane went down, U.S. Commerce Secretary Ron Brown was on a Balkan trade mission. When Worldview continues, a guest from the World Bank will explain those efforts to help rebuild Bosnia's war-torn economy. This is Worldview Money. On Wall Street, trading was subdued for much of the session as traders waited for more information on the crash of the plane carrying Commerce Secretary Ron Brown. By the closing bell, the Dow Industrials had risen 18 points at 56.89, a record high. The broader and secondary markets also posted gains with the Amex closing at a record high as well, the Nasdaq adding four points. In the bond market, the Treasury's 30-year benchmark dropping 14.30 seconds of a point in price, the yield at 6.63%. 
Bond traders had a few economic reports to ponder. Personal income in February rose eight-tenths of a percent, but spending increased at an even faster pace, surging 1.1 percent, the biggest jump in two years. Those figures represent a sharp rebound from the month earlier. But the Commerce Department cautions the numbers for both January and February may be skewed by the winter storms that battered the East Coast early in the year. Separately, factory orders in February fell 1.4 percent, but excluding transportation, orders rose two-tenths of one percent. Charles Schwab is ready for retirement. The brokerage giant is ready to get into the world of 401k retirement plans. Schwab is expected to sign up small businesses, setting up and running 401k plans for companies with as few as 250 employees. Americans have $650 billion invested in 401k plans. For a complete wrap-up of the day's business news, tune in to Moneyline with Lou Dobbs at 7 and 11.30 p.m. Eastern Time for our domestic viewers. I'm Valerie Morris in New York with Worldview Money. The GMC Sierra. This year, it has even more power. And it's always been known for strength. And, of course, style. But we still felt the need for a little something on the side. The convenient new third door. Another first on Sierra from GMC. Most people know us as the inventors of a wonder drug. But we also help make fabric stronger, homes more energy efficient, animals healthier. And we're helping to lead the way in biotech research. So much good we can do for each other. Oh, what a world it can be. There, in healthcare, chemicals, and imaging technologies, we cure more headaches than you think. You think about your house a lot. You know how to make things happen. Take pride in a job well done. You know the difference between semi-gloss and flat. You know you can do it yourself. Because you know help is just around the corner. Well, my stockbroker at Oldie has given me helpful investment advice that I'm comfortable with. Like when he told me about Oldie's High Yield Premium Plus Money Market Fund. It has a no-fee guarantee until 1997 and has had highest current yields for the past three years. Perfect for the conservative income that I'm looking for. With Oldie, my money works harder. And investing is easier. Take advantage of Oldie's higher yields. Call Oldie for an investment yield update today. Some people clean their dentures in the daytime. But if you soak at night, get new Polydent overnight. Its unique enzyme formula cleans and whitens better than daytime soaks. New Polydent overnight, next to fast-acting five-minute Polydent. What can you do to prevent this gray? Introducing Thompson's Water Seal Wood Finish Colors. Natural wood tones block graying, and the waterproofing power of Thompson's protects the wood. Thompson's is protection. Tonight on CNN's Larry King Live, U.S. Commerce Secretary Ron Brown aboard a plane which crashed in the Balkans. Friends and colleagues talk about the man, his mission, and the terrible events of the day. Tonight, 9 Eastern on CNN. When U.S. Commerce Secretary Ron Brown's plane went down in Croatia, he was on a trade mission with American business leaders. They were seeking opportunities to help rebuild Bosnia. For more on that, we're joined now in Washington by Michel Noel of the World Bank. He is the division chief of the bank's Central European Department. Mr. Noel, what exactly was the purpose of this trip? Well, uh, I was at a meeting uh, last Friday at the Commerce Department with uh, Secretary Brown, and uh, he briefed us about his mission. Um, he told us that uh, he uh, wanted to, to visit uh, Bosnia in order to forge trade links uh, between uh, U.S. companies and uh, uh, government officials uh, on the ground who are involved in uh, managing projects to uh, rebuild the country. Why is it so important now with the war coming to an end and a peace, is a, they're attempting to impose a peace on this country, why is it so important to establish these business connections? 
Well, uh, we are at the point now where um, uh, reconstruction projects uh, are being uh, lined up and the first of them, in fact, are being implemented on the ground. And it means that uh, <coughs> government uh, officials, uh, managers of these projects, uh, are beginning to look for uh, contracts to uh, secure the supplies that are needed to, to repair factories, uh, to uh, repair uh, school, uh, hospitals, mm -hmm. to restart uh, basic services of government. And uh, therefore, um, uh, there is a market there for private business in order to supply uh, these, uh, these imports. I saw some statistics uh, this afternoon. It said the World Bank has estimated that 80% of Bosnia's electricity production has been destroyed. 30% of its health facilities, 50% of its schools, 60% of its housing, and so on and so on. Where do you begin even in a situation like that? Well, uh, uh, it is in fact a, a very difficult uh, question. Uh, the country uh, has been devastated. Um, in fact, we have to start uh, on all these issues at the same time. Uh, and therefore, what we have done is to uh, come up with a series of uh, emergency projects that are delivered very fast on the ground uh, to try to address the most urgent needs in each of these areas. Now, these are government, these are, these are projects that are paid for by the U.S. government and the European governments or projects for which you're seeking private money? Uh, it is uh, a coalition of donors at this stage that is uh, uh, providing financing for these projects. Uh, it is too soon uh, after the conflict to hope for uh, private money to flow in, in Bosnia right now. However, um, it is our hope that uh, if the situation stabilizes, uh, aid money provided by the European Union, by the US, Japan, by the World Bank, this aid money progressively would give way to uh, private money. But uh, we have to recognize that it will take some time before that can, uh, that can actually happen. So in other words, none of these business people who were traveling with Secretary Brown were on the verge of doing something in Bosnia. Is that right? No, they were, because uh, although the resources that are funding the project uh, are coming from uh, donor governments, from international organizations like the World Bank, uh, once these resources are in Bosnia, available for the government, then the government turns to the private sector in order to spend those resources and to buy goods. So the business people who were there accompanying Secretary Brown were there on the ground in order to see what kind of goods they could supply in order to uh, support this reconstruction effort. Now this morning, Bosnia time, he was flying from uh, Tuzla in, yes. in Bosnia to Croatia to Dubrovnik. Why, tell us why he was going to Dubrovnik. Well, uh, according to our information, um, in Dubrovnik, uh, Secretary Brown was going to meet uh, Prime Minister Matesha, Prime Minister of uh, oh, Croatia, Croatia, whom we know well. And uh, they were going, uh, in fact, to uh, discuss uh, the possible trade links uh, in order to reconstruct Croatia, which, as you know, has also been uh, destructed. Uh, by war in a significant part of his territory. And you said that your information that uh, the Croatian Prime Minister arrived at this very same airport how long before Secretary well, Brown? We, we think uh, he arrived there about uh, 20 minutes before the scheduled arrival of uh, Secretary Brown's uh, plane. You said you saw, you talked to Secretary, so it was just before? Just before, yeah. And you, you talked to Secretary Brown just last Friday. Was he looking forward to this trip? Uh, I must say it was a, a very, a very nice meeting. He invited uh, government officials, uh, some representatives from the diplomatic corps, business people, a representative from international uh, organizations here in Washington. And he was, I must say, um, very uh, enthusiastic about this trip. He, he spoke very warmly about uh, what he could do to help establish uh, links between U.S. businesses and the needs on the ground. Uh, he was really looking forward to it, and uh, I must say the people uh, whom we know in his immediate uh, entourage were uh, uh, quite enthusiastic as well. Well, Michelle Noel with the World Bank, we thank you very much for being with us. Thank you. Thank you. Arthur. Up ahead on Worldview, a variation on beating swords into plowshares. When we come back, a look at how peace is ringing out in Russia. November 20th, 1994, Linda and Katie Duggar created automotive history. An oncoming car veered out of control and slammed into the side of their Volvo 850. It was 
the first time ever a side impact airbag deployed in a life-threatening accident. Both mother and daughter share a belief that a car saved their lives that day. At BASF, we don't make the cooler. We make it cooler. We don't make the jeans. We make them bluer. We don't make the toys. We make them tougher. We don't make the water scooter. We make it lighter. At BASF, we don't make a lot of the products you buy. We make a lot of the products you buy better. BASF. I was really downing those tablets. I started to think there was something really wrong with my stomach. Was I relieved when my doctor said I just needed a stronger antacid tablet? My Lanta tablets are strong medicine. Made stronger than Tums. Stronger than any other antacid tablet. And made with calcium. Unbelievable. My Lanta tablets. Made stronger, made with calcium. My doctor said my Lanta. Nobody does it like you. The way that you do. Nobody's got the power. You can't see deep down embedded dirt, but now it can't hide from the new Hoover Dirt Finder. It electronically senses embedded dirt, so Hoover's powerful cleaning effectiveness can get what you might have missed. You'll know it's clean when the light turns green. Hoover, nobody does it like you. What a party. I'll never forget it. We started investing in no-load mutual funds with Tebow Price right after Randall's first big promotion. People thought we were crazy investing by ourselves. Few people did it back then. Well, we wanted to enjoy our retirement. Work with kids. Hang out in the backyard. All 40 zillion acres of it. For over 50 years, we've been helping people invest with confidence. T. Rowe Price. Sunday on CNN Presents. Ten years after the world's worst nuclear accident. Could Chernobyl be a nightmare waiting to happen again? On the next CNN Presents, Sunday, 9 Eastern. Our worldview of sports begins in Amsterdam with the semifinals of the European Champions Cup, or the UEFA Cup. A shocker as the Greeks pulled off the upset by pipping Ajax 1-0. Christoph Wozicka was the hero for Panthinaikos with a goal four minutes from time. In Wednesday's other game, Juventus of Turin beat visiting Nantes 2-0 on goals by Gianluca Vialli and Vladimir Djigovic. The French squad played more than half the match with 10 men after Bruno Karate was sent off. To cricket now and the fourth one-day international between the West Indies and New Zealand in Georgetown, Guyana. The Wendy's were hoping to wrap up the series 3-1, but the Kiwis had other ideas. The hero of the day was Chris Cairns. He bowled the final over at Courtney Walsh, one wicker need, and the hosts needed five runs to win. Cairns dismisses the Wendy's captain, and the Kiwis draw level at two games, all with one game left. The New York City and baseball. Ron Gant of the St. Louis Cardinals with a two-run home run off Jason Isringhausen in the fourth inning. The play of the day is Cardinal Ray Lankford robs Butch Husky of a three-run homer and saves the game for the Cardinals. Dennis Eckersley and Todd Stottlemyre off the hook as St. Louis wins 5-3. and three. For Worldview Sports, I'm Fred Hickman. Bells may have rung figuratively with the fall of communism in Russia, but now they're ringing literally at a factory that used to make symbols of communist power. CNN Moscow Bureau Chief Eileen O'Connor has more. When these bells toll, they speak to many a Russian soul of transformation. For they are molded from the cloth of communist corruption, from the makings of old Zill. A symbol of the communist elite, the Zill limousine was the ultimate prestige item, only handed out at the top to the top. They're makers, good patriotic workers, who during World War II made shells, guns, instead of zills. But with the end of communism came a new elite, who fancied bulletproof Rolls Royce. 
So Zill workers turned their hand to something new, the work of angels. The making of church bells. And they say they experienced a kind of rebirth. How can you compare making bells and producing that scrap metal, says Sergei? Your soul feels entirely different, like we all feel we're dealing with eternity. Some workers got baptized, others stopped swearing, saying the use of the F word really messed up one of their bells. And their diligence paid off, with Zill bells being selected to adorn the rebuilt Christ the Savior Cathedral, a Russian landmark. But mainly they grace some of the smaller, newly restored churches in Russia, their bells fading two times longer than the older bells. A sign of better composition and some Russian soul. Eileen O'Connor, CNN, Moscow. Nice sound. That's our world view. I'm Judy Woodruff in Washington. Good night, Arthur. Good night, Judy. I'm Arthur Kent in London. Thanks for joining us. Closed captioning was provided by Bell Atlantic, the heart of communication. Tonight, brutality on the beat and the crossfire. Is this a rare case of excessive force or law enforcement business as usual? Tonight, 7.30 Eastern on CNN.